Look at that. Look at the five and the stars. It is a shield nickel. I am so pumped right now. Guys, I got this back in my car now. I'm, I'm literally shaking like a leaf. Uh, I, I can't believe it. I just got another Mercury Diamond. This one is a 1921. It's a key date. Oh, 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 whatever this is, it's definitely silver. Today I'm going to be testing out the 11-inch coil on the Deus just for a couple of hours and I'm going to give you my thoughts on it as the hunt goes. Hopefully I'll find something reasonable. This was a canny owl depth and it's a pre-decimal penny. It's quite an old one as well. 18... 1864. That's Queen Victoria. Seems to be in reasonable condition underneath all of that muck. So that's a decent find and it was approximately ooh, seven or eight inches deep. This looks like another coin. Looks like another penny actually. Yep, it is indeed. Hopefully another Victorian one. That would be nice. It's not. 1939. So that one's George V. It's got a mark on there as well. I don't think I hit it with a spade because it was in here. I went in like that. Oh well, not to worry. At least it wasn't a valuable one. <laughs> First thing I notice is the increased weight. It is a little bit heavier. You can feel it. I wasn't expecting to feel it at all, but you can. It doesn't really stop you swinging it fast. And it doesn't feel heavy when you're actually using it. It is a little bit slower to use the 11 than it is with the 9, but that's simply just down to the slight increase in the weight. It was very easy to set up. There's a serial number on the top of there. All I had to do was go into the coil option in the control pad, put the serial number in, select that. It recognized it. I had to do the same for the headphones as well. Apparently the headphones sometimes automatically recognize it. Mine didn't. Mine are the WS5 headphones. So I had to manually put that in, so I needed the instruction manual for that, but luckily I had it in my glove box in the van. That was another one at a canny old depth. That one I would say is George III. Yes, looking towards the right. That's a George the third George that's a George the third half penny. This one's in the same vicinity where I found the Georgian coin. Ah, and it's a lump of lead. The handling is a little bit slower than with the 9, but that's to be expected. Sounds, the sounds are incredible. The deeper signals give a much louder, clearer sound than with the 9 inch. Definitely. But the finds at depth were definitely more noticeable. When you get down to maybe anywhere between 7 and 9 inches, the sounds were a hell of a lot louder. You'd think it was on the top. I always tend to dig down deep anyway, and even the loud signals were way down. So I can't wait to try this on a site where the finds are a little bit deeper. It's it's excellent. It really is. Oh, I just love the DS. Really love it. This one was read in early 90s. Ah, and it looks exceptionally old, this one. It looks like a George. That's a George the third. There's the three there. One, two, three. Oh, it's a Hibernia halfpenny. It's an Irish half pence. So, how old will that one be? Oh, what? I don't know. 1760 to 1780, maybe. But it's got a lovely patina on it. Absolutely beautiful. Almost looks like a Roman coin.
Hey, no, then I thought that was a threepenny bit. But it's a button. It's quite heavy, so I don't think it's silver, but it may be silver plated. Yeah, it looks like a silver plated button. Little stars or grapes or something on it. A wee little coin ball here. Ah, and that's in nice condition. It's a ship halfpenny from 1955. Elizabeth II, that's got a lovely green patina on it. Beautiful. Now people who watch my videos regularly will know that in a few days time I'm going to a very, very special site. I've looked it up on something called Keys to the Past where it tells you what all the finds have been, all the structures that have been found, uh, results of archaeology and all that. Everything is connected with structures. There's a few Bronze Age axe heads being found by farmers and nothing else. So whilst you might think that that's a terrible sign, I actually think that it's a good sign. The history is there, it just hasn't been found. I'm so excited, I really am. This one was reading late 80s to early 90s. Uh, it looks like a little soldier. Yeah, it's definitely a little soldier. Looks like he's got one of them big hats on like they wear when they're outside Buckingham Palace. It's like a little pewter or a little lead soldier. It's good on the back, but unfortunately the front's all worn away. No wonder this one nearly blew my ears off. The little ring. No silver in there at all. This one was reading 65 to 67. It's a two shilling piece, also known as a florin, 1955. So that's Elizabeth II. Unfortunately, no silver at all in that one. If it had been before 1947, it would have been 50% silver. Before 1920, sterling silver. That's one of the poor ones, unfortunately. That looks like a modern 10 pence. It seems a little bit thick for a 10 pence. I don't know, yep, it's one of the old 10 pences. How thick that fella is. Give a good signal, reading about 65 to 68. And this looks like another 10 pence. Oh, I'm wrong again. <laughs> it's 1961, two shillings. Elizabeth II. So that hunt wasn't fantastic. Really, I couldn't be happier with the Deus. It's an incredible machine. I absolutely love it. And if this little bit of rain stops tonight, I uh, might get out with it in the local fields, which I'm really looking forward to because I know one field in particular where I never really find anything shallower than seven inches, so that'll be a real test for it. I will of course take the video camera unless it's pouring down with rain, in which case I may not bother going out at all, I may just sit in the hot tub. So enough of me flapping my pie hole. Here's another case from Malcolm and Moira's excellent finds collection which has been built up over the last 40 years.
very much for watching remember I do have a trench art giveaway which ends on the 31st of this month that's the 31st of May 2014 so if you check my previous video you'll find that all you've got to do is write trench art in the comment section and you're in with a chance of winning great little put-and-take games I do want to do a competition in aid of help for heroes which is a military charity over here in the UK I've got an AS 150, a Garrett AS 150. Um, it's also got a 11 or 12 inch coil on it or something. So it's got two different coils. It's got a cover for the control box. And I want to somehow sell that, auction it or whatever in aid of charity. I don't quite know how to do it though. Two pound per entry, but give it straight to help for heroes. I don't know how to do that, I haven't investigated it, so if anybody's done anything similar, please let me know. I do not want people to start putting money into my PayPal account or, or whatever, I want it to go straight to the charity. No middleman, no funny business, no messing around. But if possible, I'd like to do that through YouTube, some sort of video competition, but link it in to Help for Heroes. Again, if anybody can help, please let me know, because I'm technologically retarded. Thanks very much for watching. My next video will probably be coming up in a couple of days. I've got a few people to thank in that video um, for things they've either sent me or things they've done. And I just want to give them a little bit of recognition. So that's it's just going to be a very short thank you video to four or five people. Thanks for watching. Man's knees. Now, people who know my people who know my now people that watch my videos regularly will know that in a few days. Midges. Now what? So I can't wait to find it. So I can't wait to find. It wasn't really a fair test, but the but the but the but the I'd say the 60 or 90 degrees heavier, I forget which one. Yeah, it looks like a little pewter. I've got a few people to thank, including Oh, yeah.